want to welcome Dan Ralph to the show. Hall of Famer, Dan Ralph. Such an honor. <laughs> Such an honor to have you on the show. He writes for the Canadian Press. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Dan. My pleasure. And you know that in $1.75 will get you the same coffee I do. <laughs> uh how's everything going up there um with all this banter for you like what are you hearing how what are your thoughts how 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 are you taking in all this banter about potential mergers and stuff uh with with a grain of salt i'll be honest with you um anybody tells you they know what's going on they they're not being totally truthful there's nda signed all over the place we don't know you don't know. I don't know. Anybody tells you they know. I, I don't think they're being totally truthful. Um, I think everything's going to be on the table and everything's going to be explored. Where we go with this, who knows? Who knows? But they're talking. Do you have, you know, as someone that's covered, because I was telling Paul before you came on, I've been reading all about your background and getting inducted and all that. I go, man, you know, what a, I love these um, just like well-versed and talented people we're having come on now. It is exciting to us as someone that's, we've talked a lot of XFL for months. Uh, what do you want to see come from all this in your ideal world? Well, in an ideal world, I mean, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm a bit of a traditionalist. I would like to see Canadian rules. I'd like to see the Canadian field maintained because that's the brand of football that, that I was raised on. And that's the brand of football that I know best. But uh, I think it would be wrong to be closed-minded about this. I mean, I think the two sides are talking for a good reason. I think they both need to to explore um, different avenues to make their 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 products better. Because I mean, let's face it: if the CFL didn't need this, the CFL wouldn't be here. And and in my humble opinion, the business model needs to be um, revisited and and re um, fixed. I guess, for lack of a better word. So. Uh, and this might be a way of doing it. And I think it behooves everybody to, to explore every, uh, every avenue. But I mean, I, to me, it's, it's wasted energy to get all wound up about what could have, should have, would have, because we don't know. We really don't. That makes sense. Yeah, it's really. Uh, I mean, you know, life's too short to worry about stuff that you and I don't control over have no control over. So when, when they release and if they get to the point where they let us know what's going on and show us what's being discussed, then I think then we have a much more meaningful conversation because right now um, we don't know. And, and there's a lot of people getting all wound up. We just don't know why right now. And I mean, I wrote something earlier this week that the national uh, amateur organizations are, are, um, are asking the CFL uh, to uh, consider some rule recommendations in their talks with the XFL. And, um, and that to me, I mean, a lot of people, there was a lot of pushback on social media about that but they were recommendations. They weren't demands. They weren't do this, do that, do this. They were, Hey, when you start talking, can you, can you bring this up or can you look after this? And totally, totally get that. Totally understand that. Well, and because, now, oh, sorry. Because, Go for it, Paul. Uh, we talked with Jim Mullen and uh, you know, <laughs> before we talked with them, we didn't understand the ratio thing. And now we understand it a lot better. And it seems like these recommendations definitely would protect the idea of having the ratio and having the entire system between juniors and, and colleges. Yeah. And stuff. yeah. I think, we, I think where football Canada is coming from is uh, they're worried that if, if we eliminate the Canadian ratio at the professional level, there's not going to, it's going to be a trickle down effect down through the amateur ranks. And, and having been a former minor football coach and, and, and involved in executive matters. I, I understand where he's coming from. Totally agree. And um, so I, I see where they did. It. I see why they did it. And, and I get the rationale, but I also get the impression that they're nowhere near that yet. So, so really that they were saying, you know, to me, these are the recommendations. And when you get to that, can you, can you sort of remember that when you're, when you're discussing, but I'm not, I'm not led to believe they're anywhere near that yet. Well, I, so I followed and I think Rod uh, Peterson did a big write up on it too. Cause I obviously read your article. Um, and I said, this is, I love when we invite people onto the show and then they have these articles come out, right. That, <laughs> that cause uh, conversation, right. I mean that. And so, uh, but, but the takeaways that, that I've seen are that it was 
interesting that they did not get a response right from Ambrosi for, for the letter. And then the fact that maybe they felt that they had to write that letter anyway, that maybe in an ideal world, they would be involved, not like in the room with, okay, what are we hammering out the XFL, CFL, but that they would be in that conversation that they didn't feel like, okay, I, we have to make sure that our voice is heard in this. I mean, is that, uh, what were, am I correct in those takeaways, I guess? Uh, I'm thinking the same thing. Like, it's funny. I got a hold of the letter and then you start calling people and they don't want to talk. And it's like, well, you've got a letter and you've got your name to it. And they, but yeah, that's to me. I mean, if there's, I don't like the the term, but it's like a preemptive first strike. It's like when you're talking, this is what we want you to talk about now. And and I think in a perfect world, you're right. You would like the amateur organizations to be involved, but this is a professional football matter. So I totally get why the CFL may be wanting to do this on its own. Because it's the one that's most dramatically impacted by whatever agreement, if there's an agreement reached, or whatever merger, if there's a merger reached, it's re, you know that they're going to be the ones that have to live with it, and they're the ones that are going to have to, they're going to be the most impacted by it. But I do get where there, where the amateur organizations feel that there is a trickle down effect for sure. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to think of my next question here. I, I I think you answered what I was going to ask. So uh, if Reed has another question, don't you, don't you hate it when that happens? Yeah, I was like, oh, well, like, it's it's yeah. interesting to me because you know w- when all this came out and, and we've been learning through with everybody, right? You know, we are in XFL, you know, media. What is that? Arash asked that, you know, but we you know, we've been covering this alternate leagues, and then it is really easy to say we'll just merge them up or, or what's going on. And, and, you know, when we had Jim Mullen on, you know, president of football Canada, you know, this is uh, a legacy of all these schools and high mm-hmm. school and college and junior schools. You know, and it's this whole world of everything that it's not just as easy as, you know, you say, okay, it's the nine CFL teams. Okay. Just put yeah. a different logo on it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's kids growing up in the system. I mean, it's, I don't, mm-hmm. I, I think that a lot of people that, that maybe aren't, you know, listening to the work that we're trying to do or doing the research themselves don't get how deeply entrenched in all of this, this one decision is. Yeah. And like I said, there, there's, there's a lot of uh, ancillary uh, impact down the road and, and, and trick, like I said, the trickle down effect. And, and I didn't, I will, I'll be honest with you. I was, I'm with you. I didn't realize it either until you start reading the letter and you go, yeah, okay, that's, that's true. Yeah, that's right. And um, so I, I get it. I get it. Um, but uh, I also, I, I'm not going to defend the CFL, but I'm not going to, I'm not surprised that, that the amateur bodies felt that there was a bit of a disconnect. Uh, first of all, because I don't think the CFL and the XFL are there yet in terms of, of talking, hashing out rules and see, like I said, I think the CFL, this is, uh, they're the ones that are going to be most impacted by this, and so I think they're probably going it alone for for that for that reason, right? So, I mean, I I get it, I I totally get it, I understand, and and like I said, I I, I know when I wrote it, I wanted to make sure when the tone of the letter was that these were recommendations, they were not demands, and that we're not quite there yet, but they they just basically wanted to. Um, you know, like I said, fire a shot off the bow just to let them know that, hey, we're here, you know, and, and we're impacted by this as well. The whole goal of all of this seems to be seems to be to grow the CFL out beyond the Canadian borders. And, you know, you could play devil's advocate and say, well, kids aren't going to school and, and you know, there's not that much interest. How else can the CFL market itself to the young kids to get it, to get to grow the viewership? You know, if you had the answer to that question, you could become a rich man up here. I mean, I do have the answer. I have, I have, I have yeah, ideas. you think you know the answer. Yes, I have ideas. Yeah. No, I, that's a good question, man, because, I mean, the CFL is not looking to to appeal to people my age and my demographic. They want that 18 to 25 or the 18 to 30 demographic. And and this has been an age-old question. They've been trying to find that that magic with the young group, with the young people. And I mean, I have a I have a son uh, who's in his early 30s now. Uh, he played minor football, um, and he's he's a you know peripheral CFL fan, and he's a peripheral football fan. So they sort of lost him because when he was growing up, they did not do a good enough job of getting him entrenched and getting him involved, so that he knew what the, who the Toronto Argonauts were and, and developed 
a following of, you know, name your player type thing. His favorite, um, his favorite football player was Barry Sanders. And here's a kid in Canadian football, right? He grew up playing Canadian football. And instead of saying Mike Pringle or Bill Simons or, or George Reed or something like along that line, his favorite player was a, a an ex or was a whoops was a, an NFL player, and um, and that was because he got to see Barry Sanders play every week on TV, and that was the appeal. And I, I don't know what they can do, what more they can do to uh, to get to that, that that demographic because I think that's that's who they're trying to that's who they're trying to appeal to. And hence, I think getting into talks with people like uh, Dwayne Johnson, who who has global appeal, and um, that you know that his involvement, they're hoping, is going to bring more more young people into the fray. It's just interesting, you know. I was listening. Uh, we're on XFL News Hub, and, and Mark, the guy that runs that site, does his weekly podcast talking. And that what's interesting to me is, you know, and the XFL gets gets a tough knock right for the O one thing, which isn't true. And then they also write, or we're and everyone we're speaking. Okay, The Rock and Danny, they're going to solve all this and whatever. True, um, the XFL of 2019 and 2020 was really based on ground roots marketing in the cities, mm-hmm. getting the fans involved. You know, um, getting the headsets, getting the calls, getting people to know what's going on in the field, getting the younger demographic. You know, in, in DC, they had the the beer snake, and that was the thing where because it was like a soccer stadium, and they would. But it was these things. It wasn't um, like anything. Okay, we're going to bring the Rock in, and he's going to put. You know, he's going to yeah. announce the games, and it's going to sell a billion dollars. I mean, these were, uh, and I'm not saying that that they were any better or not, but. But I think that that gets lost sometimes in this discussion is people think about oh one one XFL with Vince or look at all this other stuff The Rock could do. But the XFL did really do some some really good tangible things um, to get people involved. I mean, do you uh, – what do you think uh, – did you follow the XFL back in, in 1920? Were you, what were your thoughts even peripherally about it? Um, I, I, I did. 20, 19, 20, 20. Yeah, I did. I did follow it only because there were a number of CFL players and coaches involved. Um, I'll be honest. Um, I didn't watch much of it. I kept in touch with certain people and, and what have you. And and then unfortunately, when there was the uh, the pandemic rolled in, um, there were a lot of people that you knew were employed and what have you. I'll be honest. Um, no, I, I did not watch much of it. I did. I watched a little bit of it in one. I watched a little bit of it the first week. I was impressed with the level of football being played, but it it did not it did not grasp me enough to want to sit down every week and turn it on and, and, uh, and watch it. And, um, but like I said, they're not appealing to people my age. They, they don't want sixties, late fifties, early sixties people they They want the young kids involved. And I totally get it. Totally understand. Those are the buyers. Those are the, those are the people that are buying things now. And that's where the money's being spent. Uh, I would agree with that. What do you think, uh, you know, one of my things that I've come back to constantly and I'm kind of, it's living rent free in my head is the TV deal and, and how many, how much that, you know, how little goes to the players compared to the NFL counterparts. Mm -hmm. How does that improve? I don't, and I, this is, uh, and, and you guys, maybe you can educate me. I do not see how a merged entity results in more TV money for, for either or both leagues. I don't. I don't because um, I've seen what uh, the 2001 and 2019 entities had in terms of TV deals. I don't see uh, a major American broadcaster willing to pump a lot of money into something like this because the track record in Canada, they, they, I bet you I could tell you that they don't know much about what goes on up here football wise. And then you've got the track record down South with the, with the XFL. I, 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 my brethren up here are, are extolling the virtues of a, of a, of a major U.S. TV deal, um, you know, breathing life into, breathing money into, the, into CFL teams. And I don't see it. I really, and I'm sorry, I'm, I stand to be educated, but I don't see it happening. I just don't. And um, there are so many questions with it that um, to me to sell that as, as a major thing. And I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll go you, this is the thought that just came to my head. Um, CFL Commissioner Randy Ambrosi, when he came aboard, kept pushing the CFL 2.0 model of, of growing the game, growing the Canadian game globally. And 
trying to um, trying to bring revenue streams back into the league. Well, it's been three years since he talked about this, and I know you know Rome was not built in a day, but there hasn't been a dime come back to the CFL for its CFL 2.0, its global its global approach, and that's been years in the making. And I'm I'm hearkening back to that. I I don't see it, and until and and like I said, I stand to be corrected. I stand to be educated. But I don't see where a major TV deal is going to be in the offing for a merged entity. I mean, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't see it. I share that, right? And and that's what we've always said. You know, I don't know if the XFL is the option, right? It, it is a option, you know, something to talk about. Uh, we have the Spring League coming up here, uh, kicking off next week, right? So that's the Developmental League, uh, Brian Woods. Yeah. Um, yeah you know, eight teams, it's bubble, you know, it's, it's there, you know, the football's all right. Uh, all the games are on Fox this year. Where last year they kind of in the, in the fall, they did like a couple games are on, but most of them weren't televised this year. They're all televised. It's like 20 games, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, on good, you know, good times, Fox Saturday afternoon. So, uh, I think that will be a very telling point of, of how those games perform. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cause yeah, like you said, I mean, we stand to be corrected too. I don't know. We don't know what is going on. Right. But, but if they come out the gate swinging and it looks like there's interest, um, that, that says a really good, you know, for a May kickoff, that says a really good something, you yeah. know, we've been talking, maybe yeah. February doesn't work for the CFL, but maybe something a little later. So we'll see. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I do know February up here is, <laughs> Is a, is a is a no go, but I mean it's it's a late April here. Um, we've been without snow for the better part of a month. Um, I'm I'm outside walking in a hoodie, and it's 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 very good. It's nice weather, um, and it, you could play football. And I, when I was a minor league coach, we were we were outside in this stuff practicing, and um, it's it's doable. That to me is doable. You could do that. And there's been a longstanding argument out west in Western Canada that they want the season to end a little earlier because they don't want to be sitting outside in, in snow in November watching playoff football. And, you know, I'm living in Eastern Canada where it's not as cold. I, I don't I can't readily appreciate that. But I have sat outside when it's friggin cold out. And trust me, I don't care how much of a diehard football fan you are when you're when your toes are cold, you're cold. What are your thoughts on what's happening this season? What What do you think is going to happen? What? Well, I'll, it's funny you mentioned because if you'd have asked me that in November when they when the CFL unveiled its full schedule, I would have said, and uh, and my my argument hasn't changed. I see football coming back, but not until September. And um, we've been slow to get vaccinations going here in Canada. And until you get more than half of people vaccinated, and you can get to a position where you can get people into the stands. I don't, I, I don't see, I don't see how you play football for any length of time here without fans in the stands. Because CFL teams, they lost a lot of money last year by not playing, and revenues, the bulk of the revenues are are um, the result of ticket sales. And if you can't get people in stands for any length of time, then um, then then I think it becomes cost prohibitive to to play football without having any revenue, like fan revenue anyway. You're losing money either way and yeah i mean there are there are the yeah there are those that that said last year i mean the, the the big the big thing we heard last year was that there were some teams saying it was cheaper not to play than it would have been to play mm -hmm. a um a, an abbreviated season so you know when you're losing uh, when the difference between playing football and not playing football is in the millions then i think you know um i i don't see teams being eager to resume play just for the sake of resuming play. I think they're hoping, banking, praying that enough people get vaccinated that we can get maybe five or 6,000 people in, in stands to start with, and then sort of slowly maybe increase that over the course of the season. But if you don't play a season this year, how Ooh, devastating is that? I've, I've been told that if there's, if there's no season, then, then the CFL as we see it does not exist. That doesn't mean it goes away completely, but I think the way the, 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 the league you see now with nine entities does not, maybe does not survive and that maybe you, um, you, you come back and you don't, you're not a national league anymore, or you've lost a franchise or two. I don't know, but I've been told that if there's no football this year and you're out of the public eye for two years, then that's, that's crippling up here.
Yeah, I've heard both sides of that. I agree, right? That that's how I feel. You know, I, I've heard it equated to like I don't follow hockey, but like there was the hockey lockouts and stuff, or yeah, they took yeah. you know a year and um, they say, oh yeah, they came back bigger than ever. But yeah, I think if if you don't play a, a game in in uh, I think I was listening. It was uh, I know three down last night. They were talking. You know, <laughs> if, if you have a three calendar year, right, where there's no football playing. Uh, it, it does get a little scary there to keep yeah. the momentum going when there wasn't, it wasn't, you know, bear with me. It wasn't the hottest product in the world. Pre, exactly. You know, yeah, I mean, you, you talk about, you know, hockey, like during a lockout, hockey was away and, and, you know, you worry about, will the fans come back? Fans will in Canada will always come back for hockey. I mean, the junior, the junior hockey ranks in Canada for the second straight year will not be having, um, won't be having a full season. And you know what? When they come back next year, their fans will come back because it's hockey. When you're talking about a, a, a sport like football, which I'm not saying is on the periphery, but it's not, it's not, it's not paramount, paramount to can or to uh, hockey in Canada. So you can't afford not to be on the field for two straight years. So we have a couple. Of, we're going to do the bulk of our show here. After we have a lot of comments this week uh, from from Arash and from. Um, uh, Stephen Brunt, a lot of people saying, uh, you know, 14 game season is still pie in the sky that we're, you know, saying, uh, what, what do you think? I, yeah, I'm, I always thought start at Labor Day and play a nine game season, half, half a season, I, I nine or 10 games. I, when they said 18, I, I, I said, good on you. Think big. I get it. But 14, I thought was still ambitious. And um, to me, you start on Labor Day. I mean, the argument in Canada is that football doesn't begin until Labor Day because the games start to mean you're going down the stretch. So start at Labor Day, play nine or ten games, and and try and, and bank on your rivalries. Like in your, you know, if you're in southern Ontario, you've got Hamilton and Ottawa playing. You've got Hamilton and Toronto playing. You've got Toronto and Hamilton playing. You've got Montreal and Hamilton. You, know, you, you sort of build those rivalries up. You save money for, for travel. And you build up your rivalries and then you play a great cup and you play it in Hamilton and you sell the, the place out and you have a nice, you end a really bad situation on a positive note. That's what I've been thinking. And, and uh, I, I've been telling anybody who listen that, you know, you can talk about 18, you can talk about 14. I'm thinking nine or 10. The one last, and we kind of hit a uh, tipping point this week on Twitter and online and, you know, we're tired of the merger and it's toxic and all this stuff. You know, we had the global draft uh, last week. You know, the the draft here is going to be on, on the fourth, right? Yeah. Are yeah. are the be the necessary ongoings of the CFL right now? Is that getting lost with all this other stuff? I mean, what are we are, are we paying attention to the right things? Are are people not paying attention to the wrong things? I mean, what are we? Are, are we, I, I don't know, because I'm getting conflicting messages here, right? I hear, okay, let's focus yeah. on this season, but then also it might not exist. So where what do we do as fans and as someone like you that covers the league? Well, I think what they're trying to do is trying to put on a brave face that it's business as usual, right? We've had the global draft. We're going to have the CFL draft. We're going to have a season. Um, they're going ahead, you know, with talk. Like They're looking like that. It's, it's, it's business and that they're going on and doing something and, and it's, you know, it's business, not as usual in 2021, but after not doing anything in 2020, we're doing things in 2021. And I think they're trying to build that, that confidence within the, the fan base that, you know what, we're, we're, it's, it's coming, it's going, we're progressing. And I mean, I understand they can't definitively say we're going to do this, this or this because the pandemic is wreaking havoc up here. And I get that. But um, I think what they're trying to do is put the, the best brave face on as possible so that fans are saying, OK, well, I'm going to put my season ticket money down and, um, you know, because there's going to be a season and because they're doing this, you know, um, they're, you know, they're hiring, they're hiring G, they're, they're filling out their staffs. You know, I mean, I think they don't I'll be honest with you. I don't think they have a choice. I think they've got to do this because if they don't do it and then all of a sudden August comes and then there's a football season. It's like, holy crap, now what do we do? But I think teams have to prepare for the best case scenario. And as they've been doing throughout this pandemic, just be ready because at a moment's notice, things could change. Do you think it's working? Do you think them putting on the spray face is working? Not with me. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Guys in the media, and you guys will attest to this, we're skeptical about everything anyways. 
So, um, and like I said, when they did 18 in the back of my mind and, and, and the people are going, no, it's not going to be 18 in my mind. It's not even going to be 14. But I think what they're trying to do is create the brave face that, you know, we're, we're going, we're going to have football this year. We just don't know definitively what yet. And I think that's what they're trying to do. But um, I, I do believe there will be football. I don't, you know, I don't believe it's going to be 14. I think nine, anywhere from maybe, maybe eight, depending on how late this thing goes. But I think nine or 10 games play a, a lot of division rivalries and, um, and cap it with a great cup. Sounds perfect. Dan Roth, we want to thank you for your time. Uh, Canadian- My pleasure, gentlemen. Long yeah. time, long time. In, uh, we should have done this a little earlier, but yeah, it, 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 you know, we've, we've, we've just been jam packed with people and we appreciate it. I'm just, I'm just taking my shots where I can get them. I get the shots all the time. It's nice to give them once in a while. <laughs> we, uh, what was it? I, when, when I first messaged, I, I used, uh, Paul, Paul will be happy about this. I used the Spider-Man pointing, Dan goes, that's my new favorite one. So we're, we're but, Spider-Man buddies now. Well, and then, and then all of a sudden, uh, and then he put the, the Spider-Man, uh, GIF. And then all of a sudden I started listening. What about all these other villains? Right. And I mean, I was a diehard uh, spider, Spider-Man cartoon kid. So, I mean, yeah. Bring on Rhino. I'm all for it. <laughs> oh, thank you for your time. Stay safe up there and stay warm. Oh, um, hell. I'm, so, in a, I'm in a hoodie. I'm in a hoodie. It's good. It's all good. We appreciate Stay well, guys. Stay we, safe. We appreciate that. Uh, we'll, we'll post Any, this everywhere. Thank you. And anytime. Take care. Thanks. Thanks Bye now.